Hey Tay here, so welcome to the VRTech channel, welcome back to this Thrillance series video, kind of, because this week I had the great opportunity to actually fly to Prague to be one of the first people to try the Somnium VR1, a new high-end PC VR headset, with of course VR capabilities, mixed reality capabilities, and tracking, eye tracking, and a very particular modular design, with also support for 3D printable parts. So in this video, can I discover this new headset? And of course, I had to sneak in my camera to take some trillance shots. So yeah, get ready for those as well. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. So the Somnium VR1 was actually unveiled last year as Somnium Connect. Back then, the plan was actually to make a standalone headset with the XR2 processor with a modular design to be able to have your own personal version of the VR1 because the core idea was actually to make it personal. So if you wanted a PC VR headset without any cameras, well, you could do it. Instead, if you wanted something with mixed reality and eye tracking, you could do it as well. If you didn't care though about mixed reality, but you still wanted eye tracking, you could do that as well. So yeah, the ability to mix and match all these modules. And while the standalone thing actually didn't stick and it changed completely toward a full-fledged PC VR because the community were actually looking more for that. At the same time, they actually kept this modular approach, trying to make it even more apparent with the design of the device. Now, I have to say that what I tried in Prague, by the way, with Brad, that you're gonna see also in some of my shots, were mostly prototypes. Actually, the first prototypes built over there. And because we are still months away from actually an official announcement for the launch, well, there's still a lot of time to actually change things, tweak things. So while the core design is actually set in stone, straps and something like that could actually change. Because yeah, talking about the design, the core idea here was actually to have a very industrial design where you actually could see every feature that you add to your headset. For example, the Steam VR tracking, because yes, these headsets support the lighthouses for the SteamVR tracking 1.0 and 2.0 are gonna be completely visible. We have it, we're proud of them, so let's show it. Same thing for all the screws. If you wanna unscrew something, you're very free to do that and to modify the parts that you want in a way you want, of course, if you know what to do. For example, the strap. One of the units actually had the HTC 5 Deluxe Audio Strap, the best strap ever made in VR, by the way. And yeah, mounting it instead of the native strap was actually just, you know, unscrewing the size and uh, screwing the rest. And by the way, opening the sides reveals the USB cables that are actually screwed in as well to avoid wobbling. That is a big problem that we have with usual VR headset where you might break the cable itself. A little detail about the cables, they actually have a custom pin profile for the USB Type-C. But again, because we said open, they're gonna share the profile with everyone who wants to use the same cables if they wanna build a virtual reality headset and use those cables. We have buttons on our headset, let's make them big and visible and touchable, and let's be proud of them. Well, that's what happened as well. And that's the thing here, that you can actually distinguish at the first sight very, very easily which one is the one that is fully packed with all the features and which one was just a VR headset with just like, you know, the VR part working on it. Just to clarify though, for the modular part, you're not gonna be able to actually upgrade in the future with different modules, but the modularity comes from them directly. So when you buy, you decide the parts that you want and they're gonna send you the device with all these parts already assembled and of course the motherboard inside ready for all those sensors that you want. So going through the list of all the sensors available, we're gonna have mixed reality with mixed reality cameras that of course have stereoscopical view the ultra-leap integrated module for actually hand tracking, and the eye tracking for, of course, more immersion and for the other rendering. Also, the second word I actually heard a lot during the, this day of testing was actually open, because the idea is to have a completely open source project, where if you wanna work with a sensor that they actually integrate, you can do it as you want, integrate it in your own games, or integrate it in the games of someone else or different applications, to have full control of 
what you actually buy. And that's very important to them. And of course, the Somnium VR1 will support completely open XR. With that said, talking about the displays, that is one of the most interesting part. Of course, here we have two LCD displays with the resolution 2880 by 2880 each eye with support for local dimming. I actually wasn't able to test that though. Running in theory up to 144 Hertz where the display should support it. By right now, they were running at 90 Hertz and in the future at 120 Hertz. Again, though, we're talking about the first prototypes and uh, yeah, we're gonna hear that there are actually some problems too. It's lenses that are using double stack spherical lenses. They actually provide a pretty wide FOV. In my case, with my very scientific testing in the SteamVR home, I was about 118 degrees. Horizontal, so very good indeed. And as you can see in the shots, the resolution is very high. It's so refreshing to actually see and use some PC VR headsets with the actual PC VR connection with display port and use the full resolution on there. Because yes, in the true lenses, actually, if these are not really competitors with the Quest 3, you can see the difference when we actually zoom in quite a lot, where you can still clearly see the cars in the first chicane in Monza. Actually, I apologize, I know that it's not the same car, but they didn't have my same version of a game. Uh, we didn't have the same Steam library, so there's gonna be some discrepancies, and we're gonna see the actual real true lenses video with all the same exact thing. Uh, if I ever gonna receive it over here and so we can test it with the right camera and everything So I didn't have all my equipment. I tried my best because I wanted to share with you a bit of the true lenses video I know that many of you are actually very curious about this headset, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry I apologize the next one is gonna be better. The colors weren't really calibrated yet So uh, I can talk much about it. The vibrancy though wasn't bad uh, it was a good LCD display to start with. And again, I think it was pretty bright at around 400 nits. Readability was great thanks to the lenses, but unfortunately there was a lot of chromatic aberration. There was kind of a deal breaker. And there was a kind of a weird line in the middle uh, where there was a wobble, a virtual distortion happening every time moving around. Again, these were prototypes, it's not yet final. The lenses didn't have any coding on it so that will make a difference and they were still working on all the distortion profiles so we might see improvements but right now well uh, on the visual side it needed some work also in my case weirdly enough uh, the work scale was uh, kind of off for me uh, things that were close to me were completely fine but if i was looking actually further away uh, the floor well didn't line up with my actual expectation of the floor everything felt a bit tinier. And it's something that happened just once with me with the Extal. So I hope they're gonna be able to fix it. But going on, after trying extensively these screens, we started to try mixed reality. And that was very interesting. The resolution where it's actually very high. Everything felt a bit blurry at the beginning, but then it turned on the NVIDIA Super Assembly and sharpening for actually the cameras, they're 12 megapixel cameras, and everything was starting to get very, very clear. Now we're talking miles ahead of the Quest 3 pass-through, by the way. The only thing that for the stereoscopical view, they're not making any software correction right now. So the cameras are fixed in a position of 64 millimeters. That is the usual IPD for people. But yeah, in my case that I'm 66.4, 66.5, it kind of felt a bit off. So hopefully in the future, there's gonna be some software correction as well. We tested with bright light, we tested with regular light. I actually tested under the table to see some uh, low light scenario. And I have to say that it was handling everything very well. And it's actually kind of refreshing again to see mixed reality working on a PC VR headset. Is it a life to life experience? No, absolutely. We're still looking clearly through a pair of cameras, but hey, it was much better than everything I tried so far. Also, the sensors were very good adapting to light. It was very nice. Also, little note about mixed reality. Actually, the headset will use two different cables when using that because of the high resolution of the camera. So bear in mind. Very fast about the eye tracking. I didn't see any issue. It was actually very fast and pretty precise. So we're gonna see it when in action. With mixed reality, we actually tried as well the ultra leap support for hand tracking. And I have to say that that worked like a 
so and so. I think they were still working on the software. So one hand was actually working and the other didn't, and then they were switching. So it was kind of the worst scenario. But again, the ultra leap sensors are very well known for their accuracy and the ease to use. So I'm sure they're gonna iron it out as well. And it's gonna be much usable than what my demo was. But then I have to say that the highlight of the trip was actually trying downstairs where they were actually creating all these prototypes with all their own machineries because by the way all the production actually happens in Europe for this headset and it's very very cool but I imagine it might make it a bit more expensive. Anyhow what's the fact that we tried a mixed reality experience in a one-to-one -one reproduction of a cockpit with DCS in a mixed reality scenario so that means that the cockpit was actually just mixed reality so we could interact with every single button over there uh, with the map and everything, but the part above where, you know, you have the, the class was actually virtual reality. So you could actually fly the plane and, uh, you know, feel like you were really in there with your actual hands, your actual body and with a very tactile feeling. And this to me was mind blowing. I wish I knew how to use DCS a bit better than just little demos that I make to make my True the Lenses videos. So pretty much just click on resume and uh, just uh, let it fly by itself. But yeah, that's where having a good resolution display and good resolution cameras actually shines. And all these little problems with wobbling or little like distortion in the profile of the lenses and of the screen just disappeared because everything felt so immersive to me. It was just very cool. By the way, those cockpits are absolutely tiny and uncomfortable. I tried to check in, but that didn't work. But so what do I think about it and what's gonna be the price? Well, to start with, well, I wanna say thanks to Archer and all the team to show us around the offices and everything. It was absolutely a fantastic tour and a fantastic experience. The headset actually still needs some serious work. There were little things here and there to actually make better to you know, present to the consumer directly. For example, the distortion profile that we said in the screen was a big one. There's some distortion that you had in the middle. Again, they had to find a way to fix it because they didn't notice it before. It's kind of normal when you actually try the same thing over and over and over. So when someone external comes in and tells you, hey, do I see that, it's like, what? and then you actually go for it and you can't unsee it anymore. But they were super open to the feedback, so it's great and they're already actively working on correcting that. About the strap, for example, it wasn't the most comfortable. The headset is gonna be a bit front heavy because all the hardware is there, of course, and the strap didn't really do a good job supporting completely. It felt a bit cheap and I feel like it needs to feel a bit more premium because at the end of the day, we're talking about a premium headset. And you know, some software anomalies with the Ultra Leap module, was some stereoscopic correction with the cameras. But I have to say that I was pretty impressed with the project to start with. Everything felt very stable. Talking about software, uh, we couldn't see much of the front end, but the cool thing is gonna be able to personalize everything like gamma, contrast, vibrancy of the screens, what the buttons will do because they'll be fully programmable. Everything you can think about even with the cameras, you're gonna be able to do it. So you're gonna have total control of your headset. And I think that is something absolutely fantastic that I really would like to see more manufacturing doing because at the end of the day, like you wanna tweak and change everything when you have this kind of devices. I mean, Pimax does it, but the difference here is that even if it was a prototype, actually very stable software instead with Pimax you're always like restarting your PC to try to make it work again so uh, it left a good impression on this side. I really see the potential here and I really hope they're gonna be able to nail down all the problems that we saw and make it you know ready uh, for production soon. Also because we're talking about the private company the price is gonna be something to actually make them some money because they need to make money out of it um, is not gonna be cheap. Uh, we don't have a price set in stone yet. Talking with Archer on her little interview, he told me it's gonna be from $17.99, $18.99 onward for the base model till a fully specced $3,000 headset. Of course, they didn't announce it officially yet. It's gonna be a Somnium Connect next year, around February. But yeah, this thing ain't cheap. 
let's say that. <laughs> but the list is coming with a cool Pelican case. Perks. And by the way, if you're interested, you can actually use a reserve a spot that is not gonna cost anything, but when they're gonna start to get in production, of course, and they're gonna start with it from the people who actually reserve the spot first. So if you're gonna get it as early as possible, well, this is the way. So yeah, I think that when we go with that price, everything really needs to be perfect. The potential is there. The project is very cool indeed. The idea of having everything open makes for our geeks and like, a tweakers uh, like a dream, a wet dream of a VR headset. I think it will really shine in simulators and something like that, but in normal use, well, uh, probably you can just get something different and it's fine because probably you're not its core audience anyway. But yeah, here we have it. This was the VR one. I think I made already a pretty long video. I didn't want to go for 40 minutes. I go on every little detail also because, you know, we're still talking about the prototype, as we said. Arthur, the CEO, is actually someone that is very, very, very passionate of VR. And you could actually see it every single moment while I was talking. It was great to meet him in person, of course, and meet the entire team and see what they do behind the scenes to actually make this headset possible. Uh, because, like, building hardware is freaking freaking hard. I feel like I wanted to give my impressions of all the major parts of it and having you make your own idea if this is a headset that you want to wait for or not. Because I think that the project is very interesting but it's not going to be for everybody and uh, they know that also so it's completely fine. But anyway, here we have it. Thanks for watching. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like this, just like. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. Really love the channel. Join button there. Let down further. Also, the Patreon. Thanks to all the Patreons for joining the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. And of course, like, happy holidays uh, because we're very close to Christmas. So, 